If you have your Bibles, let's go ahead, open those up today. We are going to finish the book of Galatians. I hope you're excited and just, just so blessed by what God has taught you through this book, that you're growing in grace, that you've got power, that you're walking in freedom, that you're boasting in the cross, as we talked about yesterday, and that the Lord is just giving you that, that new life in Christ, realizing the new creation, as Paul had said in verse 15, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And I pray you're walking in this new life in Christ, enjoying the Lord. And that word new creation, when you read it in the Greek, it means original form. You go back to being Adam and Eve, walking with the Lord in the garden, talking with the Lord, hearing from the Lord watching him intervene in your life, change you. And that's what the Lord does. And Paul continues and wraps up his blessing for the people. And, and he, he gives him one last plea. Come on, come on. Verse 16, as many as walk according to this rule, Paul says, that it's not about circumcision. It's not about uncircumcision. It's not rules and regulations or legalistic lifestyles. As many as walk according to this rule, just enjoying the Lord and freedom in Christ, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. He's making a distinction between the Jew, the nation of Israel, and the church. He's making a distinction. Some would say the church has replaced Israel, but that's not what Paul's doing here. He's actually making a distinction that the, the Israel is one covenant that God's made, but the church is a totally different one. We're under what's called the new covenant the new covenant, that God will cast our sin as far as the east is from the west and remember him no more. Verse 17, from now on, let no one trouble me. He says, he says, stop bothering me. Stop telling me I need to teach that people need to be circumcised. He says, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Paul says, listen, I've suffered for Jesus, man. I've got scars on my body to prove. And then he says, brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. This new spirit, when you are born again, before you're born again, your flesh was dominating your life. Your soul was there in the middle and your spirit was dead. It was dormant. It was there, but it was just laying on the ground on life support. But when you were born again, when you said yes to Jesus, he came inside. Jesus reached down, picked up your spirit, brought life to it, and set you right again. Putting your spirit in the dominant position in your life. That's what it means to be born again. Your soul, your personality is there. Now your flesh is on the bottom. And that's where the Lord intends to keep it. And Paul here says, man, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So be it. Amen. That's what it means. Amen. So be it. Let it happen. I believe, and I pray you believe that you're free in Christ, that you won't go back, that you'll leave sin in the dust, you'll leave religion in the dust, and you'll walk on in this new relationship that you have in Christ. And Father, I pray, bless your people. May they continue to walk with you in these days, no matter how dark they get, may they know you are the light of the world. And you'll brighten up any place, even our hearts, as we allow you to move. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.